when you start up Blender, you'll find this cube in the center of your screen. And uh, the first step in almost everything I do is deleting that cube. Uh, to do that, you should hover your mouse over the window that the cube is in. And it'll start off selected, but if you've selected something else, you should select the cube by clicking on it, left click, and then press the X button to delete it. And um, I gotta admit, even if I'm going to add a cube immediately to the scene, I will delete the cube at the beginning, just as a course of habit. Um, whatever. So you can then center the cursor in case you've moved the cursor in the interim, and that's Shift S and then the number one, and that's a cursor to world origin. That's the very middle of the scene. And then you make sure your mouse is over this 3D window view. And that's, you can tell that this window is a 3D editor because it's uh, got the 3D viewport icon up here in its uh, selection area. And so inside of this area, it uh, shift A and then M for mesh and then G for grid. And that's going to add a grid to your scene. Now, we don't want the basic grid the way that it stands. We'd like uh, to make our grid extra fancy. Uh, to do this, we're going to change the number of subdivisions from 10 to 128, and we're going to set the Y subdivisions to 72. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because we want them to have a common denominator between 16 by 9, which is uh, available here, and also we want them to be divisible by 4 evenly. Uh, and that's to uh, make sure that the cubic grid, uh, which has four faces on every uh, area, uh, wraps exactly around the, the um, grid's uh, eventual shape. Um, and uh, and it it's really to take advantage of the 16 by 9 um, format of the pixels in any 4K equirectangular video. So make sure that generate UVs is checked, and um, and then you're you're good on your on your add grid options here. Um, so click on the grid in the 3D view, and um, we're going to add a texture to it. So you're going to go down on the right hand side here. Uh, here. Okay. So down here at the very bottom, there is a material area and we're going to click on new and create a new material. And this, uh, base color setting here has a little yellow dot next to it. You should click on that and then go to oh, go to image texture and open up whatever your test equirectangular texture is going to be um, and apply that you'll have to browse your computer for it and um, and then then open it and set that uh, you should set the import settings here to linear flat and clip instead of repeat you want clip that's going to make it uh, look a lot better on the the eventual equirectangular sphere that we're going to create um, in order to be able to see this texture we have to change our viewport shading to material preview mode and that's this this button right up here on the top and so clicking on that we can now see the texture that uh, the of the uh, and I just rolled the mouse, middle mouse wheel in order to view in. Uh, scrolling in and out on the on the wheel gives you zoom in Blender. Um, I think you can deep pincher and pincher if you're using a um, touchpad, but I'm not brave enough to use a touchpad in Blender. Um, so switch your view to an ortho view and that's a uh, number pad five if you don't have a number pad on your computer you can get into the preferences of blender go to um edit and preferences and then oh my uh in the edit and preferences area there is a key control option 
to emulate numeric keypad. And if you don't have a numeric keypad, you should definitely enable that. I generally enable it anyway because I'm always using the number buttons instead of the numpad. What? Whatever. The next, we're going to, with the new grid selected, we're going to go into edit mode. That's the tab button. And uh, you'll see that the grid is uh, way more complicated when we look at it at, at this way. Um, and I, I just zoomed in again uh, using the, the mouse wheel. I have a bad habit of doing that. Uh, so you'll have to bear with me here. So with this in edit mode, you'll want to press the A button once, and that'll select everything, all of the, the, the points, the vertices on this model. And then press S for scale, and then X for the X axis, and then neg 1. And that's going to scale the entire model texture by negative 1. And press Enter at the end of that. If you don't press Enter, it doesn't save what you've just done. So we're going to need to switch our view. That's uh, number pad 3. And that switches our view to right. Uh, and we're sh we should now be in right orthographic, it should say up there. If it doesn't say, if it says right perspective, then you need to press the five button on your, your numeric keypad to switch back over to the orthographic view. Uh, roll out the mouse just a little bit um, so that you can, uh, so that you've got about the same amount of uh, viewport available that I'm showing here. Uh, and then you'll want to press the G button and the Z button, and then one. And that'll move, uh, G is grab, um, or, and I don't know why they use G for that, honestly, um, but G moves things around. And uh, we, just trans we just translated everything one scene unit up. So if we look at the larger grid there, it's one scene unit, and it has all of these demarcations inside of it of one-tenth of a scene unit. Um, so with this active and this line running across the top, we now are going to warp it. And the easiest way, in my opinion, to do this is to press the F3 button to bring up the search uh, option, and then uh, start typing warp, and uh, there is the it'll show you the the shortcuts to take in order to do this, which is mesh transform warp. And so you can also do this by clicking up here on mesh and then transform and then go down to warp. So either way you want to do that, you can either click on things or you can go uh, and use the F3 button and uh, do a search. But either way, you get a warp effect. And your action option box in the lower left-hand corner should still be active from when we added the grid and changed those settings in it. So we're going to now change the warp angle that's being set. Since we're looking at it from the side, we only want this to be a 180-degree angle. And um, the... And the reason for that is going to become clear in a minute when we switch our angle and, and do this again. Uh, so so this is this is good now. We've got a good warp. And um, I'm going to uh, now switch the view to the front orthogonal view. Uh, so that's going to be pressing the one button on the numeric keypad. And uh, it now, now we can see that everything is in kind of a, a bowed um, flat plane. And uh, in order to convert this into a sphere, we're going to perform that warp uh, action again. And uh, we'll just press the F3 button and type warp. And, and then instead of 180 degrees, we're going to set this to 360 degrees. And that gives us our perfect sphere. Now, we are not quite done with editing. Um, you should press the number pad 3 button. This switches us to our right-hand view. And uh, I'd like, I like to orient the sphere um, correctly in edit mode. And in order to do that, uh, you press R for rotate, and then 90 to rotate 90 degrees. 
and then enter and that locks the rotation edit that you just did in and that's just rotating all of the pixels to the uh uh by 90 degrees it uh it will it will help when you export the object into um, a, a wavefront uh, component. So now that we're done with that, we can press the tab button to get out of edit mode and back into object mode. Um, most of the systems that you you'll want to use this in um, prefer to use triangulated meshes. Um, and that's for the reason that um, many graphics engines are optimized uh, for triangles. So if uh, you're using a, a graphic engine that is optimized for triangles, you're going to want to add a triangulation modifier to the mesh before you export it anywhere. And in order to do that, just click on modifier properties here and... Uh, the, in, on the right hand side and um, oh, I suppose there's plenty of room above my head and you'll want to click on triangulate and that's going to add this triangulate modifier um, which is great uh, we'll preview that by clicking on the viewport shading wire uh, frame mode and uh, we can see how it puts a cross through every single one of those uh, quads um, and it does it kind of randomly uh, in this version of blender compared to previous versions of blender uh, but that doesn't really matter it's just there to help out the graphics rendering software later so next we're going to want to export the object so click on file and then export and then wave front uh, you can also get to this through the F3 uh, menu, and um, it has a couple of options. You want to limit to selection only, and you want to make sure that forward is negative Z, and that up is Y up, and then export your object uh, as, as a wavefront object. And once you've exported your object, then you are set. And you can use this uh, equi rectangular display sphere uh, with no fear of having problems at your poles caused by the, the sphere itself, uh, because it, it has every single point mapped as opposed to the way that spheres usually work and where they have a jagged edge uh, at their UV mapping at the top and bottom. Um, so you'll want to make sure in whatever engine you use it in that you turn your anseotropy setting up as high as it goes and that um like six passes uh gets rid of any kind of weird warping that you might see at the poles uh you also need to make sure that any images that are displayed or textures of any kind that are displayed on it um are set to clip as opposed to repeat in in the import settings for for those textures and the way to do that differs for different video game engines depending on which one you want to use so um good luck with that and um, remember to check out cosmicorbiters.com and to like and subscribe uh have a great day